So the proclamation of emancipation has come at last, or rather its forerunner. I suppose you are all very much excited about it. For my part, I can't see what practical good it can do now. Wherever our army has been, there remain no slaves, and the proclamation will not free them where we don't go. This famous quote by Robert Goldshaw defines him not only as a person, but as a prominent leader throughout the Civil War. What was Shaw's pre-war life like? Born on October 10, 1837, Robert grew up in Boston. His parents were very well-known abolitionists that wanted slavery to end. It was also common for Robert to be around Ralph Waldo Emerson, William Lloyd Garrison, and Nathaniel Hawthorne. Shaw thought that education was an important asset. He went to St. John's College, Harvard, and he even went to study abroad in Europe. How did Shaw first participate in the war? When Robert heard about the South wanting to succeed from the Union, he was not hesitant to join the military. Knowing that the country was on the brink of war, he joined the 7th New York State Militia. He wanted to continue in a more permanent military regiment, so Shaw decided to join the 2nd Massachusetts Infantry, where he was named a 2nd Lieutenant. He continued his training at Camp Andrew after that. Um, Shaw's early battles were an attempt to suppress Stonewall Jackson. During one of these battles, he was almost killed by a bullet, but luckily his pocket watch took the blow instead. After that, Robert decided to take on a job for General George H. Gordon's staff. Here he was promoted to a captain after a successful battle of Cedar Mountain. All these battles allowed Robert to get the necessary training he needed to become a great leader. What caused Shaw to lead the all-black regiment? Robert's father, Francis, received a letter from the Massachusetts governor, John Andrew, asking him to lead the first ever all-black regiment. At first, Andrew was hesitant to take this opportunity. After prodding from his family, he took the job. However, Shaw was not alone. He had help from Colonel Norwood Hollowell. What was it like training an all-black regiment? Well, the regiment began its training at Camp Meeks. Robert was not expecting what he saw at all. The men at the training camp were devoted and hardworking. Shaw was promoted to colonel in 1863. The 54th Regiment took part in Colonel James Montgomery's attack on Georgia. This angered Shaw. Montgomery's battle plan was to rob the town and then burn it down. Shaw thought this was a dirty fighting tactic and told his men not to fight. They ended up sitting out and watching as Montgomery tore the town to shreds. How did Shaw treat his soldiers? Shaw was someone that was for the equality among men. His men were getting paid less than the white soldiers, so Robert told them to boycott until they were being paid the same. This, however, took two long years, but he thought it was worth the wait. Shaw also wrote many letters to Governor Andrew, complaining about the Darren Raid. He was relentless in getting what he wanted, and always sticking up for what he thought was right, not only for himself, but for the soldiers as well. When did the 54th get to see their first action? Unfortunately, the 54th was left out of the attack on Morris Island. Finally, they are able to see action when they fought near James Island. This was when the white soldiers knew that African American soldiers could fight just as well and grew to respect them as fighters. What was the 54th's last battle? Gilmore's next planned attack was on Fort Wagner. The 54th was given, was given the honor of leading the attack. On July 18th, Shaw and his men marched onto the beach. They were by the Confederates who ruthlessly fired ammunition. Shaw kept marching his men forward, yelling, forward 54. As he was encouraging his men to keep moving forward towards the fort, he was shot through the heart. When the battle was over and done with, 272 men died. The Confederates were upset that Robert was leading black soldiers, that they stripped his body and buried it with the other deceased soldiers. Shaw proved to the nation that he could take an all-black regiment and turn them into heroes. Without the dedication that Robert Gould Shaw showed his men, the 54th Regiment would not have been as successful as it was.